Now, this week, Australia's largest bank, the Commonwealth, showed the power of Australia's recovery with a $7.3 billion cash profit, a $6 billion share buyback and an annual dividend of $2.98 a share with around $4 billion extra paid out to shareholders. But this financial year with ongoing lockdowns could present new challenges. I caught up with Chief Executive Matt Common this week and started by talking about the current lockdowns. It's obviously against the backdrop at the moment of a lot of restrictions and lockdowns around the country. We're extremely focused on making sure that we're reaching out to our customers, letting them know that we're here to support them through this difficult period. We're receiving about three or 400 requests for uh, usually home loan uh, deferrals at the moment per day, a uh, smaller number from, uh, from our business customers. We've made about 12,000 proactive calls over the last two weeks. We're acutely conscious of some sectors and some geographies. Uh, as we'd all be aware, they're under real pressure and we certainly want to make sure we're doing everything we can to support those businesses and individual customers to get through these uh, challenging times. So notwithstanding there is support from the federal government, for many of your customers right now who might have been stood down or who are without jobs, that is insufficient, I would imagine, in big capital cities to basically keep up with their mortgage payments. In some cases it is, Ross, and I mean, there is, as you said, very broad-based and effective support. People are able to get access to those payments very quickly, but sometimes those payments aren't, aren't fully sufficient depending on what their commitments were. It really does depend on individual circumstances. And, of course, you know, the ongoing uncertainty, lockdowns, uh, we really feel that, from our perspective, often what we're doing as well is just giving customers confidence and reassurance about the options that are available to them. That was very successful last year in the context of the deferral program. We, we offered to our customers more than 200,000 uh, deferrals and almost all of those customers came out of deferral and restarted their repayment. So we're still very confident and optimistic about the Australian uh, economy. We believe that we have to support our customers through this period hopefully before the end of the year, but certainly into calendar 2022, we think there are much better times ahead. And you did talk about uh, the fact that you believe that there will be a sharp rebound like we saw leading into these lockdowns. I mean, that's picked up in your business lending, um, you know, up by three times the system, up by $11 billion over the past year. The economic recovery, both the, the, the pace uh, of that recovery, I think surprised many people. We were very supportive of the... Australian economic recovery that enabled us to grow, as you said, a more than three times system. It's a, the best result for our business bank ever, which, uh, you know, against that backdrop gives you an idea of some of the underlying economic activity, a lot of demand from businesses and, and, a, and a great time to be, you know, making investments in, in assets that can ger generate either productivity or income for their businesses, very low uh, borrowing rates, very substantial fiscal stimulus. So. We're hopeful that we get through this very difficult period for, for businesses that can't operate and then we can get back into that economic recovery and upswing. We see an increase in consumer and business confidence, which, of course, has been dented uh, more recently. And hopefully during the course of uh, calendar 2022, it can be you know, a much better year for many of those businesses that are suffering at the moment and completely outside of their control. You've announced uh, that you will hand back some $6 billion uh, to shareholders, along with almost $4 billion, more than $4 billion in, in dividends. That $6 billion, though, the, the bank returned um, the shareholders' capital 11.5%. That's the return. So, technically, if you're going to hang on to that $6 billion, you've got to earn more than 11.5% on that money. Was it a better use of the money to give it back to the shareholders or to try and hang on to it to yourself and try and make it grow even further? faster than the shareholders might even have been able to do themselves. Yeah, well, if we look at our overall capital position, and this is one of the many factors the board took into account, we have a $11.5 billion capital surplus uh, over and above the regulatory requirements. And as you said, one the, the best use of those funds is for us to be able to invest in uh, in either technology or ways to grow our business. And, of course, we're able to, we're able to do that. We also elected, as part of the, that $11.5 billion surplus, to return $6 billion through what's known as an off-market uh, buyback. It still leaves us with a very strong uh, capital surplus. And we think that combination of the off-market buyback and, of course, as you said, a, a $2 uh, individual uh, per share dividend uh, to all of our shareholders, which is more than 800000 uh, Australian households who own our shares directly and, of course, millions more 
uh, who own that through superannuation. And we have a very uh, significant skew of our shareholders who live in Australia. So I, hopefully that's also good news for the Australian economy to put some of that uh, income back into the hands of our shareholders.